Kai ties a red cloth on the tree slowly, methodically, and then he looks up. After years of seeing only surface emotions for, from him, the new and deeper one settles me sometimes. The expression on his face now is not one I have seen before. What's wrong? I ask. I'm afraid, he says simply, of what you're going to think. About what? What happened? After everything he's been through, Kai's afraid of what I might think? It was in the spring, they came to talk to me at work, pulled me aside into a room there. They asked if I ever wondered what my life would be like if I wasn't an aberration. Kai's jaw tightens at this, and I feel sorry for him. He glances up and sees it on my face, and his jaw becomes even more set. He does not want my pity, so I turn my face away to listen. I say I never thought about that much. I said I didn't worry about things. I couldn't change. Then they told me there had been a mistake. My data had been entered into the matching pool. Your data? I asked, surprised. But the official told me it was a mistake on the microcard. Kai's picture where it shouldn't be. She told me that he hadn't been entered into the pool. She lied. The error was much bigger than she said it was. Kai keeps talking. If I'm... I'm not even a full citizen, they said. The whole incident was completely irregular. He smiles, a bitter twist to his mouth that it hurt me to see. Then they showed me a picture. The girl who would have been my match if I weren't what I am. He swallows. Who was she? My boy, I ask. My voice sounds harsh, grating. Don't say it was me. Don't say it was me, because then I will know that you saw me because they told you to look. You, he says. And now I see. Kai's love for me, which I thought was pure and embellished by the officials or data or matching pools, is not. They have been touched even this. I feel like something is dying, ruined beyond repair. If the officials orchestrated the whole love affair, the one thing in my life that I thought happened in spite of them, I can't finish the thought. The forest around me blurs into green, and without the red flags marking the way, I would not have know my way down. As it is, I tear at the widely pulling them off the branches. Kasia, he says behind me. Kasia, why does it matter? I shake my head. Kasia, he calls after me. You're keeping something from me, too. The whistle sounds sharp and clear below us. We have come so far, but never made it to the top. I thought you were eating lunch at the atrium, Xander says, the two of us sitting together in the meal hall at second school. I changed my mind, I tell him. I wanted to eat here today. The nutrition personnel furrowed at me when I asked for one extra meal. They keep one on hand, but after checking my data, they handed over the meal without further com comment. They must have seen how hardly ever I hardly ever do this. Or maybe there's something other flagged on my data. I can't think right now. Not after the revelation with Kai. I realized how much food my container holds this time. Now that it's a general portion and not labeled specifically for me, my portions have got been getting smaller. What purpose does that serve? Am I too fat? I look down my arms and legs and strong from hiking. I don't think so. And then I realize again how distracted my parents must be. Under normal circumstances, they would have noticed my smaller proportions and had plenty to say to the nutrition personnel about them. Things are wrong everywhere. I push back my chair. Will you come with me? Alexander glances at his watch. Where? Class starts soon. I know, I say. We're not going far. Please? All right, Xander says, looking at me with a puzzled expression on his face. I lead him down the hall to the classroom area and push open the door at the end. There is a small area like the courtyard 
at the admirable science bounty pond. Xander and I are alone. I have to tell him. This is Xander. He deserves to know about Kai. He deserves to hear me it from me. Not from an official in the green space today or some other day. Drawing a deep breath, I look down at the pond. It isn't blue like the pool where I swim. This water is brownish, green under a silvery surface. Messy with life. Xander, I say, my voice is quiet as if it's hidden in the trees on the hill. I have to tell you something. I'm listening, he says, waiting, looking at me. Always steady, always Xander. It's better to say this quickly before I find myself unable to say it at all. I think I'm falling in love with someone else. I speak so softly, I almost can't hear my own voice. But Xander understands. Almost before I finished, he's shaking his head and saying no, putting his hand to stop me before I say more. But it isn't either of those gestures or the words that make me fall silent. It's the hurt in his eyes. And what they are saying isn't no, it's why. No, Xander says again, turning away from me. I can't bear that. So move in front of him. Try to see him, too. He won't look at me for a long moment. I don't know what to say. I don't dare to touch him. All I can do is stand there, hoping he'll look back. When he does, the pain's still there. Something else, too. Something that doesn't look like surprise. It looks like recognition. Did some part of him know this was happening? Is that why he challenged Kai to the games? I'm sorry, I say, rushing. You're my friend. I love you, too. It's the first time I've said those words to him. And it comes out all wrong. It sounds, the sound of it, hurried and strained, makes the words seem less like they are with Kai. You love me too, Xander says, his voice cold. What game are you playing? I'm not playing a game, I whisper. I love you, but it's different. Xander says nothing. A hesitated giggle rises up in me. It's exactly like the last time we had an argument and he refused to speak to me. Years ago, when I decided that I didn't like playing games as much as I once had. Xander was mad. But no one else plays like you, he says. And then when I wouldn't give in, he wouldn't talk to me. I still wouldn't play. It took two weeks before our peace was broken. That day he saw me jump into the pool from the diving board after grandfather jumped first. I surfaced, frightened and exhilarated. Xander swam over to congratulate me. In the rush of the moment, all was forgotten. When would grandfather think of this jump I'm taking? Would this be one time he would tell me to hang on to the edge with all my might? Would he say to cling to the side for, of the board until my fingers became bloody and scraped? Or would he tell me to let go? Xander, the officials play a game with me. The morning after the match banquet, I put my microcard into the port. Your face came up on the screen and, the, and it disappeared. I swallowed and then someone else's face appeared instead. It was Kai's. Kai Markingham? Xander asks, disbelieving. Yes, but Kai's not your match, Xander says. He can't be because, because why? I asked, does Xander know about Kai's status after all? How? Because I am, Xander says. For a long moment, neither must speak. Xander doesn't look away. And I don't think I can stand this. If I had a green tablet in my mouth now, I'd bite. Taste the bitterness before the calm. I think back to the day in the meal hall when he told me Kai could be trusted. Xander believing that, and he believes he could trust me. What does he think of both of us now? Xander leans close, blue eyes holding mine, and hovering his hands hovering next to mine. I close my eyes, both to shut out the pain of his gaze and to stop myself from turning my hand away. Weaving my fingers through his, leaning forward, meeting his lips, I open my eyes to look at Xander again. 
I came up on the screen too, Garcia, he says quietly. But he was the one you chose to see. And then, quickly as a player making his last move, he turns away and pushes through the doors. He leaves me behind. Not at first. I want to tell him. I still see you. One by one, the people I can talk have gone. Grandfather, my mother, now Alexander. You are strong enough to go without it, Grandfather told me about the green tablet. But Grandfather, am I strong enough to go without you? Without Alexander? The sun shines down on me where I have chosen to stand. No trees, no shade, no height from which I can look down at what I've done. And even if there was, I cannot see for the tears.